The first tap of a conductor's wand. The first rivet in a mile high tower. The master link at the genesis of the never ending chain. The moment a single empty canvas meets a singular master stroke. There is no one thing. Because now, there are many. Because soon, there will be more. Because one is ever the beginning. Like the first link in an infinite chain, or the first rivet in the tallest skyscraper. The master stroke is found in the masterpiece. What will you begin? Hello everyone, welcome to World Blockchain Roundtable episode 25. Uh, today we have Greg from Rivet, Dave from Den.Social, Ross from Global Crypto Press, Draith from Pirate Chain and BPSAA. I'm Joe, architect founder of Dragon Chain. We expect that possibly Alex from Oxen might be joining. If he does show up, at least you'll know uh, how he pops in. Anyway, um, quick update. Last week's uh, show, uh, 133 lot to every host, 41 lot to every top contributor. Um, that's uh, passive income, free edits in the lair, and future governance votes, which is coming up soon. And I think which will be very, uh, very interesting to see You know, if we uh, uh, want to, as a community, decide uh, how the splits need to change on, you know, how the lot is distributed and everything else. So a bunch of cool stuff, uh, coming there or any of the format changes. So how's everybody doing? Great. Fantastic. As always. Good deal. Um, so anything, anything to intro before we go in, cause it's about privacy this week. Um, I, I'm, I'm not going to, I'm not going to take this one right off the bat. I did last time. So I'm going to, I'll, I'll let somebody else lead. Let's go straight in if, if you guys are right with it. Um, okay. Theme this week, blockchain and privacy. Any issues related to privacy? Oh. Hopefully, hopefully, hopefully we get some good questions. I looked through, I think I, I think I looked through them before. I can't remember. Um, okay. Yeah, I actually First didn't up. today. I usually do, but I, 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 uh, I'm, I'm uh, uh, going with the flow today. Take yes, I have seen you. So, thing. yeah, excellent. All right. So, Angel Breaker um topic zero knowledge proof so who wants who wants to to weigh in about anything zero knowledge what do you guys think? um i can since pirate chain is built on zero knowledge proofs um not sure what the uh question is or if there is a question Just, behind it but it's a good, a good point um yeah, basically, well, tell us about it uh, yeah so basically board question so yeah yeah basically uh zero knowledge proofs is a way to transact with somebody else without revealing what you have right and then the consensus behind it uh knows without revealing the other person's assets that they have what they say they have and that's what they're sending is true right so the best way i like to describe this is basically uh having a dollar within my pocket and then looking at somebody else and it disappearing from my pocket and reappearing in their pocket Nobody else is the wiser. Nobody know. Everyone knows that something happened, but nobody knows with who it happened, uh, what two parties transacted, or uh, any 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 amount of money that's in anybody's back pocket. So, right. Yeah, I heard it described also once as like <clears throat> you can show enough evidence of something to where the the likelihood of it, you know, being untrue is so small that like you can pretty much say, okay, it's proven, kind of thing. Like. I forget. I was listening to. It must have been one of uh, Pomp's uh, interviews with Zcash or something. They were describing it uh, as like, um, you know, being wrong a thousand times in a row on something or whatever can prove. You know what? I'm I'm trying to reiterate something I heard and I just realized <laughs> I don't have it down. <laughs> That's funny. That's funny. But yeah, yeah. I'm a, I'm a fan of them. Basically, it uses encryption cool. rather than obscuration, or however you want to pronounce that word, because I can never pronounce it. Obfuscation. Obfuscation right? Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> or obfuscation? Yeah, I don't know either. But yeah, your knowledge is cool. I I um uh, I read a lot about it, but I'm just recently getting into um like I've never mined 
uh, I'm a miner and a service node runner, just like kind of a, as a hobby, but I've never got into mining Zcash, but I'm, I'm just now uh, getting into Pirate Chain because I saw that you were coming on. I started looking into it and I thought it was pretty cool how you were just like, hey, why have any, uh, ha why have any um, open or transparent transactions at all? Just make the whole thing default private and it seems simpler mm -hmm. and it's probably safer that way anyway. Oh, it is safer because with transparent transactions, what ends up happening is you ruin fungibility, you know, because if you go, uh, if you look at uh, Zcash, for example, 95 or more percent of their transactions on their network is transparent. So would you really consider that privacy when you have that level of uh, transparency, right? So with Pirate Chain, the only thing that's transparent is the block reward for audit, for audit purposes, and then so after the block reward is given out to the pool or to the pool owner or to the solo miner, from that point, it can only be sent via a uh, shielded address. Okay. So do you think that like, since only 5% of the transactions are private, that the 95% of transparent transaction compromises the 5% of, of private ones? Because it's, it's easier to see like, like there's a minority on the network yeah, think of it. Think of it like this, right? So there's a thing called the anonymity set, right? So basically, when you have that level of transparency within a chain, your anonymity set is really tiny. So there's only a few transactions that you have to figure out who went to where, rather than an entire chain built on privacy, like Pirate Chain, mm -hmm. where everybody's private. So no matter what transaction happens, it adds to that anonymity set. So it's that like makes, think yeah. of it like continually adding people to a group of people, and then trying to figure out which one person made a transaction with another person. That reminds me a little bit of like the reasoning that I was reading about uh, why Tor was open source source from the Naval Research Laboratory was because like they needed to use it, but they couldn't. It wasn't working until they had like a bunch of people on the network, so they needed yeah. a bunch of regular people on it so that it could provide privacy for their you know if you had someone behind lines trying to phone home or something that the fewer people on it, like it didn't work unless everybody used it kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. So what, what kind of challenges does it introduce to to have zero knowledge proofs operate on every transaction? Like, because when I look at it, I think, you know, why isn't every uh, uh, blockchain out there looking to hard fork this feature capability into every other blockchain? Why, what's, the, uh, what, what's the technical limitation? Well, it's a whole nother animal, man. It's... <laughs> For one, transactions are a lot heavier, so your blockchain gets a lot bigger faster. So with the introduction of um, uh, Sapling, which uh, made, uh, which is made by Zcash, we actually implemented it before Zcash did. But um, basically, it made transactions faster, a lot smaller, and so forth. So there's a lot of work to be done on that end, but the nature of privacy makes things a lot harder to use. Like, for example... Um, one thing that both Zcash and Pirate Chain were working on, I mean, separately, was adding encryption to our full node wallet, right? Because it's not as easy as just, oh, yeah, just program in, add a password, you're done. It's the way that the wallets are handled and so forth. So with um, the uh, dedication of one of our developers, Forge, uh, he actually finally got it to work. And at, he's adding in node-to-node -node encryption too, so there's literally no metadata, no metadata leakage from that. So there's a lot of different aspects that a lot of people don't really think about that are just really, really tough to handle that seem normal to everyone else. Right. So if I'm right. mining in a pool and the only transparent transaction is that it's a block reward, then by the time the pool sends it to me, it's already private. It sounds yep. like correct. Yep. Wow. So. So would you say there's still a place for users to decide when they need privacy and when they don't, uh, if you're looking at the whole metaverse of chains, uh, more broadly, almost hate to use the word metaverse now that Zuckerberg's using it, but, um, <laughs> uh, but like when, when you look at all of the blockchains, there are times when people want to select privacy because they, they should know they need to. It's still going, there's still gonna be some user responsibility on this is, is sort of my question. Uh, yeah, I mean, because the, the best thing about privacy by default is that instead of having to opt in for privacy, you're given the choice to opt out, right? And that that's a key mm -hmm. difference there because if you happen to forget that you know you want something to be private, 
your SOL if you send a transparent transaction. However, it, the, the reverse can be easily remediated by giving somebody a view key for that transaction. Yep. So there's no Absolutely. way for somebody to accidentally send something transparently that's meant to be private. You know, so you get retroactively on, on the business aspect of it, what about a because making privacy default is you're definitely going to be a target of uh, everyone that hates privacy. So as far as like governments getting on exchanges, all that kind of stuff, how much more difficult has it made? Has it made uh, moving forward on those things? Uh, it's, there's a lot of uh, difficulty trying to get on different places or exchanges or just anywhere. But what uh, people that don't like privacy fail to realize is that with something like pirate chain, you can just give like if you're a store owner, right? The onus is really on you to report your income, report all your stuff to the government, right? Now, being a law abiding citizen, only thing you would have to do is, okay, well, here's my store's wallet. Here's the view key for that. So now you can view everything, every transaction that, that's occurred within that wallet. And now they have everything they need. You know, so there's no, there shouldn't be any problems from the tax side or from the government side with that. You have that option to give them that view key. So, so from just for for the benefit of people who don't know what a view key is, um, that that that, if my understanding is correct, is a key that lets you expose, you know, mm -hmm. what's happened on mm -hmm. your wallet without giving any kind of command authority to them. It's not the same thing as your private key that lets you issue commands. It's it's a way to let people see selectively what what's happened. Correct, correct, and even uh, individual transactions too. Oh, cool. Yeah, that's, that's awesome. Nice. Is that a static key or is that just for the one, is it a one-time use? Because that'd be, that'd be great if it was one-time use, but it sounds like it's probably if anybody else got I a key. I believe it's a static key in terms of the wallet itself and for the transaction. I, I, have, I would have to confirm that with my dad. I guess just next Theoretically, if you, if you, is there a transaction-based transaction uh, view key also that you could theoretically give them all of the, here are all the transactions that are taxable where I uh, either converted or did whatever else or purchased or, or received and they wouldn't have the wallet key is that right correct yeah they so wouldn't that, have the uh private that's key what you would do key. you would basically go and right. say okay here are all the transactions that you care about and you can see those forever but you can't mm -hmm. see new stuff until i show that to you so so okay. lawyers lawyers are going to have to argue that that's a like a cash actuary method you know cause, because <laughs> cash would be the same thing so mm -hmm. i guess yeah. that has to be set as a precedent for that to be you know now yeah. accepted so well, and it's great that the security implications on it are you could have millions of dollars and even, I mean, no one, how do I say it? I mean, the, the big problem with crypto is people who have big holdings <laughs> that then get doxxed and now people know, oh, you know, he holds this much yet and he walks around with the key or, you know, who knows what, right? Yeah, you become right. a target. Yeah. yeah. That's my concern. Like, I, I, um, like, I'm pretty open about my stuff. That's why I have to have, like, security at home and things like that. But it's a real thing. Like if I'm mining or if I'm running service nodes and I've got assets that are maybe I have a copy of it at home and I have a copy somewhere else. Um, if it's open and everybody can see like what I'm doing and how much I might have at what location, five dollar wrench attack. You know, I don't want to be subjected to that <clears throat> at all. Right. And so yeah, it's right. a really it's a regardless of <clears throat> like, what privacy haters don't like, ooh, bad things in the world exist. You know, yeah. that, that kind of thing that, yeah. you know, it's there's so many reasons that I don't want people in my business that are like safety things, too. Yeah. That's an, inter right. an interesting thing you brought up because I mm -hmm. I got hacked. Um, supposedly, I got hacked. Uh, you know, I'm do I do YouTube stuff. I was uh, I was working with Crypto.com when they first started. I mean, way when they first first started. And <clears throat> yeah, I talked about my account. You know, I'm I'm on YouTube, so people like know when it was my birthday. It doesn't take a lot of like research, you know. Uh, so somehow they got into my e email, um, and then uh, they uh, got into my Crypto.com app. But I had a pin. Nobody had the pin except for me in my head and Crypto.com. Um, so they did, you know, verify the transactions. Uh, they sold all my 
all of my uh, my crypto, converted it all to Bitcoin. They pulled everything that I was staking that wasn't locked for like a, a month or three months, but the stuff that was just staked and uh, I was able to pull out. They pulled all that out, converted it to Bitcoin, and then withdrew everything. But to do everything, they had to have a pin. Um, and that wasn't in my email. That wasn't anywhere else. Couldn't be explained away. But they told me just, eh, it's your fault. Screw off. You didn't have a <laughs> two FA. I'm like, but I had a pin and that wasn't anywhere but your your files. Um, and that's happened to three other people that I know. Happened to my son's friend two weeks ago. Um, Did they, they socially engineer it out of them or something? Or a key logger. Hmm. Jeez. Yeah. So I don't know. That's totally the different thing. Yeah. Is is the pin, but uh, hmm. but yeah, you definitely become a target. Um, and it, it, it it's as little as uh, this the software is so sophisticated. Like when you get your your new card, you can hold it up, and it's really little. And uh, you know, there's there's software that goes through YouTube and it just looks for that. Um, and they they're able to like pull numbers off that. Uh, right. so yeah, I like privacy is important. It's very they don't understand that they're exposing all the time just yeah. because there's and it doesn't even have to be sophisticated too it could be an accident uh just this right. morning uh dave portnoy posted uh an email that he had sent and he blacked out the email address for privacy but he just did a quick like i don't know ms paint thing and it was a transparency that he didn't notice so oh, if you zoom in a lot it's still there you still read the damn thing you know what i mean so there's a lot of things that just accidentally happen because privacy by default is is not is not the way the world works right now. You have to opt right. into privacy, and taking a you know marking out an email address is an attempt to opt in to privacy. And yeah, I've done uh, I've done several speeches on this before in terms of just like privacy in general and what you don't realize you're giving away, right? So yeah. one of the examples I love to use is uh, MVP cards, right? If you go to a supermarket, you know they have their own MVP MVP card that you swipe and it gives you a discount. Right, but what are you actually giving away? You're giving away <laughs> you're how much you bought. Yeah, mm -hmm. you're telling them what you bought, how much you bought, how often you buy, and they're building a database on you to do specific targeted ads. And there was even a case that Target is actually able to accurately predict uh, up to seventy percent whether or not you're pregnant before you even know. <laughs> I believe it. Like, right. Think about your oh. uh, how many times you filled out something, and they just want your last four of your social security number. Right. Yeah. The last mm -hmm. four is the only thing that you can't accurately predict based on someone's birthday and where they were born and what, yeah. you know, that yeah. kind of thing. The rest yeah. of it you can create yeah. by just. Like most people don't know that. Most people don't know the first three numbers right. are the state. Well, it, it, yeah. Most people have it gets even creepier, too, when you get into black box AI algorithms, right? Um, I read or saw this talk once where they were able to predict, you know, sort of when to target people who might be likely to buy tickets to go to Las Vegas. And what it, what it turns out they were actually targeting was a reliable predictor of who had, uh, you know, uh, bipolar disorder because they they were basically hitting people with these ads right at the time that they were about to go into a manic episode and, uh, you know, buying tickets to Vegas has a strong enough correlation to that, that they were picking up, uh, yeah, you know, people going to gamble and then expanding on that and hitting other people that they profiled, uh, you know, basically wow. uh, exacerbating mental illness and sending people yeah. off to a place where some screenwriter watching this is now yeah. writing a Black Mirror episode. Well, <laughs> and, and, and by the way, that's what we're talking about. I mean, and that's and that's the thing that uh, with you know with crypto um, that uh, you know if you accept a payment from someone they can that depending how you manage your wallets and everything can now see oh what what are you doing with the money where is it going you know what you know what uh, other things uh are happening and so it's an odd thing because that whole chain is then opened up right um yeah and you know that's been for a while but a lot of especially new people to crypto don't don't quite grasp that right away right so you know right Anyway. Well, and with the permanency of it, it's it's especially uh, pernicious when your privacy is gone. It's gone. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. and that's why we created the uh, service War, right? So Wrapped R it allows people on Binance Smart Chain to exit Binance Smart Chain into Pirate directly. Oh, cool. Yeah. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Really? This way they can just you know take their funds and just make it poof. You know, I'm glad you said that. 
Oops. I'm glad you said that because I just realized like I got a bunch of crap on BSC I'm trying to get rid of. I could just roll it right into war. Yeah, exactly. Wow. That was wow. spilled how? What's that? How do you, how do you spell how, that? spilled? Oh, oh there's W-A-R-R-R. A triple R. Yeah. yeah. I'm sorry, I'm answering for you. <laughs> yeah, I, I was gonna ask you about uh about how how in certain certain cases you really you need to give up your privacy. Um, and, and that, that key is a key. Um, like I, I was talking to a, uh, a project, um, I won't say who they are, but they, uh, very, very new. And, um, the team's tokens are, are locked, but they had brought on an advisor who they paid a, you know, buttload of tokens and they didn't lock them. And, you know, they said, okay, just don't do anything with this for, you know, for a year. And the guy's like, yeah, yeah, cool, man, yeah, yeah, and then dumped and killed the price. I mean, it went down like 80, 90 percent. Mm. And you know, the next morning, the guy woke up and he's like, "Hey, you, you dumped all those tokens I gave you." And the guy was like, "No, nah, not me, baby." And he's like, I, I, "I'm looking at your wallet, man. I can see you did." He's like, "Well, you know, I had stuff I had to take care of." Um, so, so it's a key that you know I think for for like team members. Um, people that you need to police uh, within your circle that, that is really, really uh, awesome that they'd be able to see that still. Mm. And then everyone else would not be able to see, you know, what they have. Yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah, well, privacy opt-out, I think, has got to be the key, right? Um, the the ability to opt-out of it has to be there, but, but a default privacy setting is clearly superior to one where you have to go out of your way to make it happen because most people are not going to. But it's not, it's not, uh, yeah. it's not really uh, beneficial to anyone but you. So that's, I think, why everything's engineered the other way to make it as difficult as possible. You literally yeah. well, have to go get paint. Portnoy had to go get paint, learn how to use paint, <laughs> and then try and fix something that he didn't even do well. <laughs> you know, right, whereas yeah. if it was just default, you wouldn't have had to mess with it, but Way it's a lot easier to just out. maybe maybe crop it or and it, it's designed. It's I mean it's designed to make it as hard as possible. Well, um, it's it, it's also hard to make things private, right? Um, so if we're in a situation where there's this huge incentive to scale and to go fast and to get big and to you know take over the world with uh, ten to one hundred x returns, like. That is a strong incentive to take shortcuts, and privacy is a very easy shortcut uh, to carve around uh, when you're under that kind of pressure. And it, you know, doing things the right way um, by not cutting corners, I think, is, is a, a big key there. Okay, next topic. Is that good? Um, how to or topic of maintaining privacy uh, on wallets when using them on a website, like say MetaMask, uh, with all the existing trackers that, that, that are there. I haven't even looked into whether websites are other than the ones that meaning, well, you know, is anybody watching that when they're not even using it? I don't know, right? Yeah, I mean, there's always people watching. There's there's bots watching, waiting to front run you if you're on a decentral exchange. <clears throat> exchange. There's, um, you know, like, even if you, even if you consider um, that your name isn't attached to an address to be privacy. And even if that's true, which I don't think it is, like the moment that you make a mistake, if you're using that same wallet the whole time, your entire history of everything you've ever done is exposed. Yeah. You know? There's a big one here that I'd like to comment on for um, from, from the world of Rivet uh, as far as infrastructure providers. Like we offer strong privacy, or at least as strong privacy as we possibly can, um, you know, with, you know, with a privacy policy that says we're going to not just uh, hard bar, not sell your information, but fight if we get a lawful request and validate those in court. Um, you know, we're not just going to presume we're not going to just roll over, but we also are going to do minimal data capture. That's not the case for anybody else that does what we do. Um, and there is a capability in MetaMask that's built into it where a, a DAP builder can say, override the back end that you specified. Um, and use the one that we use for our application. And it's transparent, or it's a completely transparent to users. So they can switch you over to, like if you've set up a Rivet provider in your MetaMask, they can switch you over to Infura or Alchemy or anybody else. Uh, and you don't even see that. And it's it's all of a sudden, 
you know, their privacy policies that you've got to worry about. And some of those are not, uh, uh, not especially protective. So, uh, that so making things easier, user doesn't notice it. I'm, I'm sorry. You're saying that that capability is there for uh, like people building DApps that, like, yeah, wouldn't even know that they're like. Uh, Correct. I think they're using Ethereum, but they're using uh, something else. Well, they might they might think that they're they set up to use Rivet and they're doing that to protect their privacy, and instead they're getting directed through Alchemy, who you know uh, may or may not be. Uh, offering data to themselves, which is what their terms of use refers to uh, ah, third party, okay. third party uh, uh, affiliates. Yeah. Um, so it's, it's um, MetaMask is not, uh, is not verifiably private when it comes to the context of dApps at all. Yeah, yeah. Well, go ahead. MetaMask is really getting uh, MetaMask trust wallet, all of those. Uh, there's this, this issue now, which it, it's help. It, it's, it's really killing privacy. Um, and a lot of the flexibility of crypto uh, there, you know, most tokens. Now there's this new uh, structure. It's not really that new. It's, you know, a few months old, um, but it's where there's a tax on all transactions, whether it's, you know, 10% or 9% and, then, you know, 3% gets burned, 3% goes to holders. So, you know, everyone loves it because, Hey, we're getting, you know, free tokens. It's every, every transaction we get, you know, a, a little bit. Uh, and then also, you know, the burn mechanism is great. And then 3% goes to, you know, marketing or whatever. But that's 10%, man, of every transaction. So if I want to move my uh, my crypto off of my MetaMask onto a hardware wallet, that's going to cost me 10%. And then to put it back to, you know, sell or send somewhere else, that's another 10%. So that's 20%. Of your money, you know, if you, wanna, if, you want, if you want, if you want to trade that in some way, on the smart, you have to make thirty percent, like thirty percent too now, Sean. I mean, like what? common. What the, for the tax? Yeah, yeah, it's, it's like ten percent to each of those. That you just it said. sounds great when you're first when you're first thinking about it, but I, you know, if you've made a decent amount of money and hit some big gains, you want to move it off MetaMask. If you're like first, you don't want it on there. You do up. You're screwed. I mean, that is a lot, and you can't trade it. You have to, it's literally, you have to make 30% on a trade or it's just not worth it. And that's so risky to to, to, to be forced to make 30%. I mean, so, there's, then, yeah, there's there's a couple of things there. Like, for example, um, a project that I advise called Nightlife Crypto, it's a gaming platform, has the same mechanism, but it's like two and a half percent. Like one and a half goes to liquidity stakers and then the other 1% goes to the project for development stuff. But um, one thing you can do is, you know, because we have a bridge that you can bridge between networks, whether it's BSC, Ethereum, Polygon, or Turtle Network. And, like, the bridges are whitelisted. White so, therefore, like, there's no tax that's involved if you're converting funds from one to another network. But I see your point about moving from one wallet to another. But I think that as long as the tax isn't something crazy, like 10 or 20%, you know, a lower percentage isn't too bad. Yeah, that's. I was talking to, to a couple of people about that this week. I said everyone, it's going to have to be dropped to three percent because it's just it's it's very. I mean, ten percent is like the the you know the common thing, and then it's it's great. But then I literally was like, man, I, mean, I want to move this off my hardware wallet because I want to show certain things on. You know, I don't I don't want everyone to know how much I have. Um, and then I was just a little bit you know uh, uncomfortable. Uh, with having that much in one wallet. And then I thought, I was like, this is going to cost me a ridiculous amount of money. I mean, if you have, you know, $200,000 worth of something, it, that's, you know, what, 40 grand just to move it off. And that's and kind of the marketing angle later. they take. Is It's an anti-whale move, you know? Yeah, and then I look at that and like, that's, wow. but, you know. It really makes you not want to sell. It works. <laughs> yeah, it, well, it does. But there's another thing that it does too that a lot of people don't realize, which is it it deters those front runner bots because they'll start losing a lot of money over time, especially in transaction fees depending on the network, and their profitability is severely thrown down because you know I like what was it I experienced it with uh, Engine Starter right so Engine Starter released uh, about a month ago or something like that 
And there was a front runner bot, just one of them that literally front ran every decent sized transaction of one ETH or more. So I played it smart I, and, you know, I did less than one ETH, so it didn't affect me. But literally every time you saw a transaction of one ETH or more, it would buy just before them and sell just after them. And then literally it, would, it was making so much money. It was crazy. So even just like a small tax on transactions would just easily eliminate that because it would just destroy that bot. Yeah. And again, that's another reason for, for privacy. The fact that if you if you couldn't front run, whether it's because it's uh, it, whatever mechanism you used, that's that's valuable. Can, oh, yeah. yeah. Can, can I bring well, up and too? Commit oh, reveal is super important for that, too. <laughs> yeah. 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 Well, and so so one thing that I think we should bring up, there are a whole bunch of things around that uh, have always worried me with using MetaMask, which is it's in the freaking browser. I don't trust a damn thing in a brow in a browser and uh there are a couple of things i say very recently there was some issue with you know someone who got the typical uh uh you know share your screen let me help you figure this out and they walked them all the way to sharing their the qr code for their private which was amazing to me that that was even possible that this would just oh here's your you can scan this here's your private key in case you're in the in the coffee house or something right um crazy that's one thing um but then the other side is in my opinion that uh the default is create a key and do the backup and stuff and it it isn't saying hey this is a browser you're in the freaking browser you should probably get a hardware wallet if you're going to have anything significant here right it just scares the crap out of me to say oh my no my private keys in my freaking browser and you know, since you're mind. talking about that and private keys and stuff, <clears throat> most people, whenever they install MetaMask, they write down their seed phrase and stuff, um, which uh, you know we've all done, I guess. But I, you can in MetaMask, you can also make a bunch of different wallets inside the one uh, inside the one MetaMask uh, plugin or whatever. Uh, something that I did is I wrote down my seed phrase, and then later on, I had made a couple, like maybe one for my mom or maybe one for my brother or something. And luckily, I went in and I dumped my private keys additionally, uh, but, you know, in addition to the seed phrase. Um, I went in and saved them to an encrypted USB and, you know, off-site store, backup, that kind of thing. A year later, um, I had a situation where a machine crashed and I uh, got my seed phrase and I put it back in MetaMask. And it brought up the, like, all but, like, two accounts that I had made after I initially wrote down my seed phrase. The future ones didn't, like, it, weren't part, it wasn't part of that. And the, when you add an account, nothing ever comes up that says, oh, by the way, these might not be included in your original seed phrase on MetaMask. Yeah. And so I would have lost those if I hadn't backed up my my. Well, uh, I just private. learned that right now from you. Yeah, That's terrifying. Just, uh, There's well, like three <laughs> accounts with funds in it that I could not recover. Wow. That's, that is the way that uh, the old, the original Bitcoin client used to work, right? That it wasn't a deterministic. It was literally it's generating, I think, 10 or 20 keys that it would use and then generate new ones. And if you backed up today and then kept using it for a month anything on the new side wouldn't be backed up on the keys so, and also because um, of the but they, you know, they changed that but that that's scary stuff well you could also and you probably still can i don't know how it works today but you could pretty accurately predict which um addresses were in the same wallet and probably the same user mm -hmm. so even if you were using a different um address for different transactions because it generated them all at once, there was a like a way to see, oh, these are probably all the same wallet kind of thing too. So that reduces yeah. privacy as well. Even if you're wow. trying. So yeah, anyway, that's all that's all the problems with opt-in privacy, I guess, right? The the main thing with MetaMask, be very careful. I mean if if I were to advise any any of my friends or, or anyone that I that I talk to, I would never ever use the private keys directly in MetaMask. I will always have a hardware wallet used through MetaMask, you know um and uh anyway very important thing because it's you know and if you're if you're just playing with it it's it's uh you know hardly any money it doesn't matter that much of course but um you know something in six months <laughs> there might be a lot of money in there anyway yeah. um okay next well, question and, and uh i would just say ledger live is, is a lot better these days if you use ledger yes. uh, with connecting through something like wallet connect which will keep you from having to yes uh have a browser extension yeah and by the way i just realized last night apparently the new i don't know when what version anything else but like say chrome doesn't work anymore with metamask yeah. unless you have ledger live running and you have to do some bridge things like ah oh, I, I had never had to 
do that before. So anyway, interesting stuff. Okay, Jacob Wayne, um, for noobs, what is KYC? Why is it important for crypto? Why is it not necessary? And how does it affect privacy? Obviously, who wants to who wants to talk first about this? And maybe even bring in about this the new um, bill, the new law that will go into effect in a year or two. KYC is know your customer. Yep. Um, I think it's a, it, it, it's important to for businesses or whoever you transact with to know that you're not dealing with a terrible person, whatever that Sweet. might be, you know, but that's, that should be kind of the end of it. Um, <clears throat> as um, a, as a contrarian on this possible. point, as a contrarian on this point, I think KYC is a violation of your rights um, and is a piece of a regime that was designed in the 1970s, uh, and put into place in the Bank Secrecy Act that should have been declared unconstitutional because, um, you know, be because if there is a right to privacy in the Constitution, uh, then that right to privacy, in you know, in my opinion, uh, creates a reflective right similar to how uh, the First Amendment creates a right to free expression uh, and also creates a right to hear and read and see and know. Uh, the right to privacy to me is a is a two-sided coin and we ought to have a right to not know and so as a business uh who uh who's required by law to to know your customer uh, i think that's a violation of their constitutional rights myself Greg, Greg, you're, you're an ass you're an <laughs> ass for this because i have to now take contrarian point to something that i really do agree on but how do you then uh if if there's an investigation and there's someone who's a, a terrorist, you know, terrible person. By you not knowing, you become an accomplice in eighty. Have you? So have you, you or yeah. have if you or is that? They come and they say, "Hey, man, these people killed a bunch of babies, and you made that possible." Even if it's not illegal, that still is is, is the fact that you didn't know. Oh, the the same part. argument could be could be applied to. Um, same argument could be applied to uh, uh, the right to free expression, right? You can say that because you didn't uh, didn't know that this was misinformation, um, and you spread it, you are now an accomplice to whatever bad effects this misinformation has. Eh, no, like, but no, now you're stressing. Now we're come on. Old-fashioned yeah, police, the old fashion so police work, man. If, old fashioned if police the, work. If the KYC were. Um, solely so that you know okay you're not dealing with uh north korea or iran or you know wherever else they don't want us to do business right um it's not really for that i mean it is they use that that is a that is a key that's legally but uh mostly it is for the ability to go after people when they need to they realize hey we pinpointed this guy uh is doing something we don't like possibly legal so we can now go pull records and then trace back yeah. all of whatever history that's what it's for. Um, and there are ways around it, both for the business and, um, well, but, but in good old for, fashioned for the government. Yeah, but the large police work, if you're part of it, then how do you defend yourself? You now have to defend yourself, basically, is what I'm saying. You have to say, oh, I didn't know that that was North Korea. Oh, I didn't know that those people were going to, you know, kill babies and eat them. I thought that they, you know, sold candy. Uh, in right, yeah, but it's, like, but but I, it's yeah, a mass uh, surveillance regime designed oh, yeah. to mass surveillance. It, it, it is, it is yeah. but, that's, but, I, I, but the argument for it, and that is that that's I think the most legitimate. But, there, but here's important. the larger Not question, real yourself. quick: Who, who that, determines who's a terrible person? <clears throat> well, right. that's why I said killing babies and eating them because I wanted to make it clear that they were bad. Right, yeah. but, but how many of those are there really compared to people they just want to nail for uh, not reporting everything on the taxes? See, I'm not. That's that's I that, no, I'm not going to disagree Man, with that. Sean's saying yeah. the, the argument that they will make on the House floor, right? That's the right. argument they right. will make. It's like, oh, these people right. do these things. Obviously, we want to be able to find out who they are and if if, if somebody kicks in my door and comes in here and says, "Hey, you transacted with these people that killed babies and then ate them, and you did that, and you you're like, oh man, I didn't know. I feel terrible." How do you defend yourself then? Now, does the phone company have to defend themselves though now, for making phone calls, like for facilitating phone calls? Do if if uh, no, you go to AT and T and say they used your they used your uh, 
communication service to coordinate a terrorist that's, attack, is it their fault? No. No. Well, that's but, what I'm saying. I thought but that they will have to provide records. Like the, the law enforcement will go to them and they'll say, oh, well, here are the records, right? So effectively. Right. In a specific warrant related request, right? A better analogy Rather than a mass surveillance. Oh, right. that, uh, yeah. yeah. See, you're talking about entities and companies, and I'm talking about like more individuals. Well, you know, but and here's the thing: yeah. blockchain has solutions for this. You can abstract it. You can still honor the law, but the business doesn't have to actually know the customer. You can use decentralized identity to say that uh, here is what we know about the customer that you require us to keep. The rest we don't care. We don't know. And yeah. by the way, we don't even hold that info because I don't want a potential leak. It's held by you know some other party that does that at all the time. Well, that's what's important to me. What you just said, which is like. Uh, you know, I, I've got my favorite T-shirt from when I went down to Bitcoin Miami was from, I think, Basque. It says KYC is the illicit activity on the back of it. And um, it's, you know, like, why do we wh why do we require by law that companies uh, hold dangerous, personal, identifiable information in a central, insecure database? That's kind right. of how it's expected to happen. You have all of this personal information on your customers in a honeypot for hackers to come and get and exploit and sell your data and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. So if we right. were able to, you know, somehow um, not do that, that would be amazing. <laughs> right. well, it would be different if it'd be different too if we had any information that it was effective at stopping anything bad from happening. But there, there's no there's no proof that you know since right. the '70s that it stopped anything other than yeah. uh, people transacting freely. And it, you can say <clears throat> the annoyance that every citizen should have of the current surveillance state is that billions or trillions of dollars is spent on this surveillance all for the purported purpose of stopping the terrorists and if you look at go back and it blew my mind in the, in the the home of liberty in america in boston that when the boston uh, uh marathon bombing happened the fbi literally it's like knowing that all this surveillance is there they know all of what they know they come out to the people. Do you do you know who this is? You know they they raid people's houses, and it blew my mind that the boss, you know, people in Boston are like, sure, come in. You know that blew my. It's like this is that. What happened? What happened to Boston? But beyond that, it's it's a crazy thing to me that they didn't know supposedly anything. It was and like, that was why why are we being surveilled? If you didn't if the very least give us something wrong person right? on that as well. Wasn't there like a like Reddit sleuths found the wrong yeah the, that Richard whatever guy they just made a movie yeah, about him. That's what, that's what I'm saying, but they supposedly are doing all this surveillance so that the very people and guess what they were following the very people. The same thing that they were told about the 9/11 bombers. Yeah. They they already knew everything they needed to know based upon you know what should have been uh, what should be considered just good. We always we always we always spiral into red pills. This is a story I'm for sorry. another show, but I lived with one of the 9/11 terrorists. Really? Was my college uh, roommate. <laughs> yeah. What? That's nuts. That's yeah, awesome. And that, that's another show. And another which show. one? I'll just tell you one later. <laughs> later. Cool. I mean, not cool, but like interesting. <laughs> no, it's yeah. pretty cool. Yeah. Nine Eleven isn't, but yeah, if someone has to. Back, back wow. in uh, 2018, when uh, actually this is before I was before Pirate existed, and. Actually, the first time I actually met you, Joe, was in uh, was a Cryptolina 2018. There was a project there that was basically trying to solve the KYC issue by creating a private blockchain to where you KYC once to that blockchain, and then basically that's kind of like your ID. So, like, if you want, if you need the KYC in an exchange, you would send them a transaction or something from that wallet and then basically it would query the database of um the blockchain to just all it would say is yes this person meets your requirements or no yeah but on projects like that also they only give out like st the certain information that they that is needed yeah. like if you want to go on a site that you have to be 18 then literally they they would can go to that that uh, whatever that project is or that company and their only information they get is, yeah, Sean is over 18. Yeah. Not what my birthday is, <clears throat> not how old I am, not yeah. where I live, nothing. No picture of my driver's license, which has everything. Just, yeah, he's over 18. That's all the information you need. Yeah. You got yeah. um, That's what Factor does. I mean, would something like That's that ever factor, meet the yeah. legal qualifications for KYC? Because in theory, you know, by law, I believe the law reads that the company or exchange must know XYZ about the customer. 
not must know right. that another they company have to be, knows that, right? Right. They, it has to be enough information that they can swat every customer that they have. That's the point. Well, right? it would have to be, get to a point where that would be like that one company would be uh, bonded and, you know, uh, regulated. And so that it's, a, it's it, it basically would have like a governmental approval that, hey, you can take, you know, this this company's uh, word, you don't have yeah, to get all DHS the information or something. You can well, yeah. one, one of the big downsides that I see to this is that, you know, companies like uh, Parler, for example, when they start up that service and they get themselves onto the app store and they become app store number one, um, you know, they're then booted off the app store for not being able to run the kind of algorithmic spying that, uh, that, you know, Facebook and Twitter do. And therefore, they throw them off and say, "Until you can implement this really expensive thing, you're not allowed to compete." Can I, can it, I bring it up consolidates power to around that. big guys? You know, Wait, when point. we 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 uh, partnered with a company in Florida to do uh, a basic uh, safe pass, right? It was that the some people at the time, early COVID, were wondering how can we do this, and and so they came to us. And they're like, "Well." Um, if you do this, if we're involved, we want to do it with a decentralized identity uh, so that a person could expose to their uh, their place of work, let's say, yes, I've had the tests and my score is this, which means I can come into work safely because I'm you know, either following the guidelines or, or the test is uh, whatever with antibodies, whatever the results would be without exposing the HIPAA. Uh, the medical info, the fact that I got a test, the fact who took it right, which is what they're doing now with. Uh, Was that back when HIPAA Max mattered? <laughs> well, I don't, I don't think it ever mattered, right, from what I've understood. <laughs> but the fact that you can do it with blockchain without exposing that medical info is the same as any anything else, that uh, right. you know, this financial info shouldn't be exposed. It should just be, you know, uh, and frankly, if if the government won, although I wouldn't trust them with this, but if the government, well, they already have it to know where I live and everything else, they should be holding that and it should be a reference point. I could call in well, and, and say, I, I, I have my KYC filed with my state and they could reference that and verify, OK, you're good. And we have a reference number if any if law enforcement comes for you. Right. And well, yeah. ideally more locally than that, like, you know, yeah. City Hall, federated database be into the state database. But the, the issue is always uh, honeypots. And yeah, so the, the further, the, the more decentralized you can get it, the better. Ideally, it would be me holding it, right? Yeah. Um, right. But uh, well, yeah, anyway. To, to, to me, I think the real issue is, do we want state power to be able to project itself like that? Is that really what we want in our constitutional no. republic? Should they be able to say that we can look at everything and you have to have everything we want to look at? Um, and, you know, call, call me a, a, you know, an extremist, I guess, but, um, but I don't think they ought to be able to project power that way. See, everything we're saying is making the case for private by default. <laughs> Totally, yeah. totally. And you know, there there are there are exceptions for business and people where I do want to expose to someone something, but I don't want to expose it to everyone. I just want to like the over eighteen. Yeah. I'm of age. I'm, you know, I live in a, a certain city. I mean, stuff like that is sometimes useful, uh, especially. Well, I mean, in in a, in a in a in a in a true perfect world, the government should do all this. They should have. They should look at blockchain for this. They should. Uh, they should. Because they're supposed to be here to protect our rights mm -hmm. and to protect things, and yeah, they, they can literally protect our identity. You could get your driver's license, and then you know if you had to go to that website to to you know show you're over eighteen, they should have some kind of thing set up where they just well you plug into that system, and then they're you know you're over eighteen. It's verified. They don't need to know your driver's license number. They don't need to know your birth date. You know all of that. That that should be set up. Um, but it's like like we've been saying, the, the system is set up to create, you know, these honeypots. Basically, it's set up to get as much information as possible, whether it's with the company or whether it's with the government. And then that creates those honeypots for nefarious folks to get information from. Also, I can right. tell you guys before, uh, I have to talk to you after uh, about some thing really bad that happened to my family that has to do with... Uh, Red pill stuff and Greg, do you have? I hope you have a helmet because you got to put it on because the <laughs> mine's gonna blow. Wow, that's why, well, that's why data mining is the number one industry in the world right now. Right. 
This right. is a great conversation. I haven't put enough thought to privacy by default like that. And I feel like now I'm going to spend the entire weekend like <laughs> we, we doing my oh, yeah. setup to be, where I have to go through an extra step to be unprivate. Because it's so much enough time to, to get mistake. one more question, which I think the next one's pretty good because it'll be a, you know, a, a, a broad ranged one. So crypto enthusiast asks, are all the privacy coins and tokens out there really able to shield or wash your identity so no one could trace it back to you? So I think right. probably... Great question to end it with. Um, who wants to? I'll I think like we were talking about, it's not privacy by default in most of them. It, you know, a lot of a lot of coins call themselves privacy, but it is kind of difficult to, to to set it up, not just remembering to, but to actually do it. Um, so the privacy by default, I, that really, it, I love that. I think it should be a rallying cry, you know, with uh, I think any that, time we're talking about any kind of issue or problem. Everyone should just put, should be privacy by default. Should be privacy by default. If you look at these projects and these uh, products and these uh, networks as tools instead of a solution, and realize that you yeah. yourself are part of the solution and your personal education on how to use the tools properly and how not to use the tools and which situation to use which tool, um, you're part of that solution for privacy. And these are tools for you to use. So if you expect a tool, if you expect a, a hammer. To, to, to drive the nails in for you, it's not going to work out, right? But if right. you learn how to use it, you can drive nails with a hammer. And it's yeah. just kind of how I yeah. would. Yeah. The key, the, go, go ahead. ahead. Go ahead, Jeff. The key thing is, too, is that you, it, it's really tough to decipher because the uh, short answer to that question is no. But even when you look at other chains like the most popular one, Monero, right? That uses the word I can't pronounce. And yeah. Literally, there's a company dedicated to uh, unveiling all the transactions and tracing everything, which is Cipher Trace. I've read right? about that. Yeah. So yeah, they just while, got bought by a nasty company too. Yeah. So exactly. So hmm. when you look, you have to also look at the method in which they're hiding your or they're shielding your transactions, and if it's not encrypted, to me, it's not worth getting into. You know, it's is the best thing to get into. And if you try, basically, if you're trying to hide among the masses, it's just not going to work. They're eventually going to figure out exactly how to, how, what you did. You know, well, there's high performance computing and, and AI algorithms that, that pull you out of the masses that either needle in a haystack isn't a way to hide anymore. It's yeah. not a human right. looking at right. yeah. transactions, it's a machine. Uh, something and, should be mentioned too, uh, uh, because you mentioned obfuscation, which is horrible, a horrible approach, uh, encryption. Uh, for on-chain, uh, we use some various things which wouldn't work. Well, at least they wouldn't work for a privacy coin as much. But um, and that is structural separation. That is that we don't actually ever put those payloads on the general network. That is the business data. So if you had uh, medical, financial, privacy data, it would be structurally separate. Um, it's on the same blockchain, but none of the verification ever has access to it unless the you know, unless the purpose is to, you know, spread that uh, info or share it with whoever. So it's that's another interesting point. And it's frankly very hard uh, because, you know, just going into this, I had I didn't know a lot of the stuff about uh, uh, what Pirate um, does. I didn't know a lot of uh, what um, uh, a couple of the other privacy coins did because I haven't had time to yeah, I haven't been watching them as as closely as I, you know, way back. I, what was it? It was was it zero? Was it zero cash or was it uh, dark 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 coin? What was the way way? I used way to mine dark coin. What what's the yeah. question? Then I I couldn't remember which which project it was. I followed that like really was it, close. Wasn't for a Verge long time. like Doge Dark first or something like that? Well, dark coin was um came, became Dash, and they'd had uh, right. they came up with masternodes and they'd used. Uh, they modified. I think they used CoinJoin, and it's funny because they used to get made fun of. I was when I was mining uh, uh, Darkcoin before it switched to Dash. We used to get made fun of, like by Bitcoiners for some reason for using CoinJoin, and now that's like all you hear people talking about, like use CoinJoin, it's private. Yeah. Well, <laughs> can, can I ask, like, say for Drake, if uh, it, you know high level without much detail, you know which are the most powerful? So if you say you know pri you're going to say pirate, pirate obviously, um, and you know and that. Uh, but are there any others that are doing interesting, good things that people should know about without, you know, because if you do a search, it's going to give you the, you know, just the top by market cap, 
that call themselves privacy yeah. clubs. Right? Um, how about this? Instead of naming projects, I'll name you know uh, just privacy standards. Like, okay, ZK Snarks is yeah. top of the line, right? Hands down, the best of the best. Now, um, there's Halo, which should be coming out. Uh, who knows? It's been in development for a long time. Basically, it's the trustless version of ZK Snarks. Wow. Right? Cool. So, so it's signatures, right? No, it's pure no. ZK Snarks. That's what Monero okay. is. Gotcha. Monero is... Uh, Monero is string signatures. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. yeah. So uh, basically when that comes out and that's proven to be you know great, though there is downsides to it, though, because like I said, private transactions are generally heavier and more... Um, uh, move slower, so forth. So, with that trustless version of zk snarks, the block time or the uh, uh, transaction time is a lot longer. The transaction weight is a lot heavier. So, it's just technology that needs to be developed over time. But either way, encryption over everything else for sure. So, zk snarks is up there. Ring sigs is depending on how many rings are in the in the in that protocol. It's uh, it's okay. You know, eventually it'll get it'll get uh, decrypted. So, you know, that's going to be a problem. But yeah. uh, for now, and Mimblewimble is just um, it, it has its own issues. But um, still, zk snarks. Any any project that uses zk snarks is solid. Mimblewimble is neat. Yeah. I like the way it works. It's a pain in the um, ass because you got to have a hot wallet all the time. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, exactly. but. Yeah. Uh, I'll plug a couple of tools. Um, I, I, I'm a big fan of Session. If you go to getsession.org, that's like, if you're familiar with Signal, um, it's similar, except there's no, uh, it's decentralized and there's no uh, phone number attached and stuff like that. Um, and then, uh, but that's somebody who was gonna come on today that didn't make it was Oxen and they have, they're a fork of Monero. They don't share a lot of code with Monero, but they have some interesting tools. Um, like they run LokiNet, which is a uh, onion routed network. Um, I run one of their service nodes and it's a layer on top of their blockchain that gets rewarded for um, performance. But the cool thing is um, they use that for privacy tools. So Session is a privacy tool. They're coming out. Um, uh, some of their team is working on Chainflip, which is interesting that um, we should have a whole different conversation about um, one day. But they're doing um, something similar. Well, they're doing they're doing a DEX, but it's like use your own wallet. You don't need a special app. You can just, um, it's native cross-chain swaps without any wrapping at all um, and without any special wallet. And it's on their privacy network over LokiNet, I think. So it's like, it's kind of a really cool private DEX solution. So that's a tool that doesn't exist yet. Um, but yeah, look at the tools that people are making. You know, that oh, yeah. Out. I would say, I would also add on just, just from a practical standpoint, your number one tool to protect your privacy is right here. You know, mm -hmm. right behind your eyes, between your ears. And uh, the way that you need to be using that is you need to be thinking about uh, the the way that your privacy is attacked, uh, the same way that they're thinking about attacking your privacy as an adversary, right? Like a bad guy. There, there, are, there are people out there who are trying to find out information about you, just have to assume there's a really persistent one, um, and then think about it like that. What signals am I sending that tell people who I am and tell people other parts of of my online identity uh, through what I say. So, because if you send information about how you transact on a privacy network over email, your email better also be private um, and so on and so forth. So really ultimately, um, you know, whatever you send out into the world that you don't keep in your brain can be found. Um, and the tools that you use need to have the right protections to satisfy your level of comfort. You're never gonna be 100% private, never 100% secure, um, but but you can limit your exposure to it by uh, by limiting what you send and share to just what you need to. And there are lots of techniques for that that you should research if you're interested in this. There's two comments I want to make. Uh, first, the weakest link in any privacy-related coin or anything in general is the person itself. Privacy is more times than not the 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 tools that you use work. It's just the person that fails to use the tools or use them properly. Right. Now, the other thing I wanted to mention is privacy has layers, right? Basically, or levels, I should say. The deeper you go into privacy, the more inconvenient things get. So it all depends on the user's um, uh, comfort level as well as their uh, 
willingness to go that far. Because otherwise, once they once you go so far, there's only it limits what you can do, what you can use, all everything. So it removes a lot of things that you would normally use day to day. So it just all depends yep. on comfort level and feasibility for people. Yeah, there is a one of the best ways to do this is to keep an identity for yourself that you can do regular things with, and keep it completely segregated from an identity you use to do private things. And use uh, a VPN always. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> all right. Okay. So, uh, Ken, uh, thanks everybody for, for joining. Um, can you guys, uh, uh, each one of you, you know, go down. How, how can uh, people follow you, contact you, see what you're doing, anything to promote? Dave. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'll, I'll plug Den Social like I always do. Um, I'm doing a show Wednesday mornings now. It's, I did my third episode this week, so I'm getting a little more comfortable with it. Um, uh, anybody's welcome to jump on that with me. I go live at 9 a.m. on Wednesdays, Florida man time. Um, and I post it up a few days in advance in the DIN layer on DIN social. So come on and chat with me one of these mornings. So um, I think I just rambled for an hour and a half this week, but it was pretty good, I think. So it was good. Check pretty it helpful. out. Greg. All right. So uh, upcoming on November 15th is Private, uh, spelled P-R-I-V-8 a privacy-oriented uh, conference to do with the future of technology. Uh, Rivet is sponsoring it, so definitely check it out. Uh, Glenn Greenwald will be headlining it. Um, and I may be talking, I'm not sure if I'm talking yet or not, but I may be talking more about that idea that um, privacy has a reflective right not to know in it. Um, so if anybody wants to hear more about that and I get a chance to talk about it, um, you know, check that out. Otherwise, follow us at uh, Rivet. Rivet. Uh, Here you go. Like that. <laughs> Excellent. How extremely okay. apropos for today's show. Yes. Ross, what's up? Uh, globalcryptopress.com, all the latest crypto news. We got live crypto prices on there as well, updated in real time. And we are syndicated on Google News and Apple News. A couple articles in the last week that I think were pretty cool. We got Quentin Tarantino releasing a Pulp Fiction NFT that contains unreleased footage from the movie. That Ooh. should be uh, go for an insane amount. I cannot imagine what that will get. Uh, and then one other story that was really interesting. Will, will it debunk the what's in the mm. box thing? Anyway. <laughs> that's that's what you're talking crazy money, man. He's yeah. been sitting on this for how long? It's not like he knew NFTs were coming. It's probably going to suck, but I want to see how much somebody <laughs> shells out for it. I mean, look at what people are paying for. Way less uh, exciting stuff. I mean, yeah. you know, it was, if it was literally just the box, right? <laughs> yeah. Anyway. Sorry, but, but you had something else. You had something else. I don't, I don't remember what the other thing was. Whatever. <laughs> okay, cool. Everything's Sean. available at press.com. Uh, go to Stushan on YouTube. Uh, I'm giving away uh, NFT this Saturday. Um, one of Satoshi's girls. They're limited to 500. Um, they're, you know, you know what they are. They're, but they're not that, you know, risque. But they, it's really, they're nice NFTs. They're cool. Um, they're limited, like I said, to 500. I think there's only like 75 left um, that are, that are uh, coming out. Um, besides that, you know, follow me on Twitter and everywhere. And uh, yeah, I think we have a drunk on crypto coming, um, oh. which we haven't done in a while, which is uh, very interesting. I can do uh, that if you want to. Somebody we get, join. Yeah, if you want it, we get <laughs> hell yeah. Drunk. I literally down an entire bottle right first. Oh I'm yeah, like, not out of all the wine at the beginning, and then uh, <laughs> we, we take like five shots. So we, the on. idea behind it, and originally <laughs> was crypto is you know very uh, hard for people to understand. So we wanted to make it as simple as possible. So we wanted to make ourselves as simple as possible. And then we had like you know heads of projects or you know CEOs on, and <laughs> that had been pretty interesting because some of them were like, hey man. I'm not supposed to tell you this, but we're partnering <laughs> with Visa next week. We're not supposed to say anything. And uh, <laughs> so, you know, some 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 people shy away from coming on and doing it, but yeah, it's fun. That's good. I'm probably That's good. Dre. Yeah. So you can follow me on Twitter at the infamous Kata, and um, you can find me at Pirate Chain, uh, Pirate Chain Discord, Telegram. You can find me on uh, the BPSAA. You can find me on Nightlife Crypto's Discord and Telegram and stuff. So I'm pretty much, I'm like the Bill Murray of crypto. I'm pretty much trying to be everywhere <laughs> randomly. <laughs> you know nice. what? I am following you on Great. Twitter. I, even, I didn't realize that was Great. you. Awesome. Great. Nice. 
Right on. All right. Well, thanks everyone for joining. Uh, make sure you share the show. The more views it gets, the more lot the participants, both the hosts and the uh, the people who provided all of the great questions and topics this week will get. Um, and, you know, follow everyone on here. This is a great show. Thanks, guys. It's really good content. Um, see you next time. Yep. See you next time. Thanks. Appreciate it. Cheers. Now, more than ever, our data is at risk. Our supply chains are in jeopardy. Our systems are broken and businesses feel powerless. Dragon Chain gives you a different way, a safer way, a better way, and you have power over your data. Dragon Chain gives you proof in an untrusted world. Build now at dragonchain.com, America's blockchain.